Hello, my name is Samantha and in this video I'll be demonstrating how to prepare for the system test on the Zeus IE. When the device is powered on, you will see the checklist for the system test displayed on your screen. Otherwise, to access the device test, select it from the right hand side menu. The system test should be performed every 24 hours or every time the device is switched on to check for operational reliability of the device. To ensure the device is ready for the system test, work your way through the different checklists. To verify the power supply, ensure that it is plugged in and that the indicator is green. The LED light above the plug symbol indicates that you are connected to central power supply. The light indicator above the internal battery symbol indicates that the internal battery is charging. Should you lose central power supply, you will no longer see an LED light above the plug symbol. To verify your central gas supply is plugged in and indicators are green. An LED light above oxygen and air indicates that we are connected to central gas supply. If the central pressure was low or not connected, there will be no LED light indicated. In this instance, nitrous is not connected via central supply. To verify your gas cylinder pressures, open the valves to check the indicators are on and remembering to close them. When you open up the valves on your reserve gas cylinders, an LED light will represent adequate reserve cylinder pressures. If the LED light is flashing, there is inadequate pressure in your reserve cylinders. And in this instance, there are no LED lights, which means that there are no reserve gas cylinders on the back of the device. Just ensure to close the valves on your reserve cylinders to prevent inadvertent depletion during operation. Check that you've got your emergency breathing bag available. Ensure that you've got a manual resuscitator bag available in the event of device malfunction. To verify your oxygen flush is functional, this is done by holding down the oxygen flush button and observing for the filling of the breathing bag. To check the oxygen emergency delivery system, set the safety flow to 12 litres and ensure the bag fills. This is verified by opening up your safety oxygen control knob by pushing in, dialing up to 12 litres with the flow indicated on the outside of the knob and observing for the filling of the breathing bag. Then returning the safety control knob to its original position. Now that we've covered the supply safety checklist, we can move on to the breathing system checklist. To verify your anaesthetic gas scavenging system is connected and the flow adjusted, ensure that you turn your anaesthetic gas scavenging on at either the wall or the pendant. Then verify that the orange marker is between the two black lines to indicate adequate scavenging. To check your breathing system is connected and locked and the breathing hoses are okay. Visually inspect that the lateral twist locks on either side are in the horizontal locked position. Then ensure that your hoses are securely connected to the ports. Check your manual breathing bag is in place and okay. Ensure that your breathing bag is hanging from the receptacle and the bag pointing downwards. This allows for the pressure in the breathing system to be adequately measured. To check your APL valve is set to 20 millibar. Set your APL valve to 20 millibar. For the soda lime, ensure no significant color change. Absorber filters apply to users with reusable soda lime. Visually inspect your soda lime for any significant discoloration. Soda lime will change from white to purple when exhausted. Now to check the suction Y piece checklist. Please verify your endotracheal suction is functioning as per usual practice. Microbial filters apply to users 
with device and filters connected to the inspiratory and expiratory port of the breathing system. To check your wire piece has a HME filter and is connected to the self-test adapter. Verify that a filter is in place and connected to the wire piece of the breathing circuit and attached to the test cone adapter. With the sample line, ensure that it is appropriately connected. With one end connected to the CO2 water trap and the other end to the machine side of the filter and the internal sample line connected to the second water trap or the protect water trap. And with your water trap, ensure that it is empty and okay. Visually inspect your water trap to ensure there is no accumulation of fluid. To remove the water trap, squeeze the clips and pull out. If you notice fluid accumulation in the water trap, a slip syringe can be placed into the black port and removed. If the water trap becomes blocked for any reason, there will be discoloration of the top ports. The water trap should be exchanged every 28 days. To insert the water trap, squeeze the clips and push in until you hear a click. Now that you've worked your way through the various checklists, as a self-tester, you can insert your name here or by touching on name of tester, you can choose from a list of recent users. Then press start and confirm with the rotary knob to initiate the pre-test. The pre-test will begin with most frequent errors tested during this time, such as a large leak, a Y piece not properly occluded or an incorrect APL valve setting. Pre-test usually takes approximately one minute to complete. If a problem is detected, the pretest will pause and a highlighted image will be displayed alongside a fault and a possible cause and remedy. In addition to the image, important system data is displayed to the left of this dialog window. Leakage and compliance values with a date and time stamp are displayed here alongside central and reserve gas cylinder pressures. Diva metering modules are located here and the internal battery capacity is displayed. Once a problem has been addressed or rectified, select repeat pretest and confirm with the rotary knob. Once the pretest has been completed, the device will automatically commence the eight minute system test. On completion of the system test, the device will return to the standby screen. Results of the system test will be indicated here and there are three different color results. Green indicates that the device is completed and operable. Yellow will indicate that the device is conditionally functioning and partly operable. And red indicates that the device is not operable. Please contact your technical service team. If a self-test is canceled, this will be stated here instead of completed. To access the self-test results, this can be done by exiting the start screen and selecting device test from the right hand side. Underneath the test results tab will indicate the various components of the system test with the applicable color coded dot alongside each component. By selecting the test info tab, you will be able to see the last self-test result and when it was completed. Leak test one is in the near patient breathing system and up to 100 mils is tolerated. Leak test two tests the system as a whole and leaks up to 500 mils are tolerated. By selecting on the test history tab, will allow you to see the results of previous completed tests. To access the leakage assistant, select leakage assistant from the right hand side. Leakage assistant facilitates leakage detection in the breathing system. Test pressure and leakage test values are displayed 
continuously so that a reduction in the leak is immediately apparent by manipulating the connections. The test pressure is between 25 to 30 millibars and is indicated in the form of the dotted line on the screen. If the patient's subsystem is the cause, a leak greater than 100 mils will be displayed in red. If there are other causes, a leak greater than 500 mils will be displayed. If a leak is detected, a message will indicate where the leak is likely to be found. For further information on preparing for the system test, refer to the instructions for use or contact your local Draeger representative.